Hello, Igniters. It's Heike and welcome to the show. If you're a new listener, welcome to the Pursue Your Spark podcast. Are you ready to swap confusion for clarity in your health journey? Say goodbye to generic advice and hello to your personalized path to vitality. Join me for a 20-minute spark breakthrough call designed for women like you in midlife who crave real, tangible progress. Let me help you, so book with the link in the show notes and we can have a chat. Today we talk about strength and flexibility and oftentimes when we hear these terms we think more about stretching and Pilates and weightlifting and maybe using a Dyna or stretchy band to get stronger or more flexible. But there is another side to this, especially during midlife, that doesn't get as much attention and that is our mindset. Both mind and body are connected and one can't thrive without the other. Midlife is a time of change. As you know, our lives change, our roles in life change, our bodies change, and our perspectives on life and what we want evolve. It's not just about keeping our bodies strong and flexible. It's equally or maybe sometimes even more important about our minds, how we adapt to change, face challenges, and set our path forward with conviction and strength. In this episode, we're not just talking about physical health. We're focusing on strengthening and flexing our minds to handle midlife changes. Think of it as a fitness for your brain and your attitude. Mastering these mental shifts can make all the difference in navigating midlife and thriving. So whether you're adjusting your fitness routine or looking for ways to deal with life's changes, this conversation is for you. Let's get into how a strong and flexible mindset can be your best asset in midlife. Ready to get unstuck and recharge your midlife? It's Heike Yates here with the Pursue Your Spark podcast, your spot for a straightforward talk on fitness, nutrition, and a can-do mindset. With over a decade of experience, I specialize in empowering women in midlife to break through limiting beliefs and thrive. We'll dive into everything important for women in midlife, from conquering menopause to fine-tuning your metabolism and letting go of old beliefs that no longer serve you. So are you ready to say, yes, I can? Tune in and discover actionable steps that make midlife feel better than ever. This is the Pursue Your Spark podcast. You know, in my almost 40 years as a fitness, nutrition, and mindset coach, the one thing that keeps coming up over and over are our mental barriers that hold us back to achieve what we want to achieve in our health and fitness and other things in our lives. And I call them roadblocks. And these roadblocks stop us from living our fullest life, following our dreams and the the steps we have to take to change our life. And instead, we feel guilty. We feel stuck. We feel that we just can't do that next step. And so I want to talk about the three mental barriers that are coming up over and over and that also are the most important ones, I think, for the time being. And number one is Fear of injury and failure. Let's talk about injury first. As we're getting older, our body is just not functioning as well as it does or has been in the past. And when you think about back into your 20s or 30s even, your body moved way different. You recovered quicker from injury and you were less likely to injure yourself. Now you may deal with osteoporosis or other health conditions that make you worried about, should you be doing these exercises? What if I injure myself? And sometimes it's really paralyzing from some of the clients I've worked with that they feel like they don't want to do anything. And that fear keeps them so stuck that they're really missing out on life. And the fear is oftentimes, at least from my experience, unfounded when you know what else you can do or think about it differently. And then the fear of failure. 
Failure as in, I have not reached my weight loss goals or I have not reached my fitness goals. I wanted to run a marathon and here I am now. I only can run 10 miles and I, this all look at me. Um, I'm a failure. It is not a failure. It is what you can do at any given life and day. And so injury and failure really tie close in together that you're afraid to be injured. You're also afraid that you're not cut out to run that marathon because you might injure yourself or something comes in the way that you cannot keep going with your training. And so you're thinking of yourself as, oh, you know, I knew it, I shouldn't have done this, or I knew I couldn't do it. These self-doubts creep in and they are so debilitating. Let me tell you about my story with fear of injury and failure. And you may have heard my running story before, but I used to be a marathon runner and I just got into marathon running by accident, literally. A client of mine had a ticket for the Cherry Blossom 10 miler and I'd never run 10 miles in my entire life. This was way beyond my three miles that I would run a couple of times a week. And I didn't see myself as a runner, but she had to take it. She gave it to me. I said, all right, sure, I can run this. And so we did all the legal stuff. And uh, so I prepared for the race and I started running and I started running and I had a lot of fun and everything was going great. And I did the 10 miler, which then, of course, I said, yay, I'm going to go and I run a marathon. I mean, hello, Heike, 10 miles to 26 miles was nothing in my mind. And I could do it. And I trained with the Montgomery County Roadrunners Club that is here in Maryland. And I had a great group of people and we kept running. We ran marathons together until just about now, almost two years ago. I had excruciating knee pain during my runs. I was fine during my swim, fine during my bike, doing my Pilates and my stretching and strength training, but not during running. So long story short, I finally got an MRI and it turned out that I have a lot of arthritis in my knee and also a torn meniscus. What does it mean? Well, I should have already had And I say should have already had a surgery about two years ago when I was diagnosed because the doctors were like, this is really bad. You need a full knee replacement. But I was determined and I said, nope, nope, we're not going to go that fast. So I went to my therapist. We developed a plan. I still don't run and I changed my mind into I am no longer a runner, which is also an identity that I had taken on during my running years. I am now a runter, runner and I identified with this. But then I said, okay, it took me a year, but I did it. I no longer run. I could run. I could get the knee replacement, start training again. But do you know, you never know how long those extra body parts will last. They promised us 20 to 30 years, but I said, not going to take a risk. risk. And screw up that new knee. So I did not get a new knee, but I developed a new plan around how I can keep my knee healthy and I'm not going to wood. It will go on for much longer. I know eventually the knee will break down, but I do knee strengthening exercises. I keep biking. And so my knee's in a good place. But I had that fear of injury. What if I injure myself so badly that I can never walk again? What If I attempt to do a race and then I suck at it. So I had to change my mindset around not being a runner. And that was tough for me. And number two is we are overwhelmed by choices. With so many fitness programs available, it's so easy to feel overwhelmed. Deciding which path to take requires information and intuition about whether or not it's the right thing for you. And it's pretty common to get stuck choosing where to start. It is really, really tough sometimes. And you have all the options in front of you, but 
if you're ready to put your health front and center and excited to get moving, what do you do? You look at the fitness programs and you look at some of the videos and they promise a transformation with your body and the workouts and articles and the serene path of yoga. Making a choice isn't just about picking a program. It's about listening to what your body is saying and matching it to what you feel is right for you. It may not be the right thing after all, but you got to try it. And recently, I did a poll in our private Facebook group and the one of the answers that came up the most was, I don't know what exercise is best for me. Again, the choices. And we'll talk about more how your mindset will help you decide. But that's definitely a mindset shift, a mindset a barrier, a roadblock that many have. And you may feel the same way. You say, Heike, I have no clue what to do. And number three is stuck in past identities. Shifting from clinging to us, our past selves to embracing who we're becoming now in midlife is crucial. It's about changing the narrative from I used to be able to to I'm learning to, which can open up a word, world of possibilities. When I hear this from clients, I'm 62 at the time of this recording. Uh, when I hear this from other clients that are older than I am, and they tell me, oh, I used to be able to play tennis. Let's use this example. And now I have trouble with my knees. I have a bad back. And I have all these things that come might come along as we get older. But we need to see the bright side. We can't go back to where we were 20 or 30 years ago. It's impossible, even though social media makes us believe that this is true, that we all can be super uber duper fit and have the life that we dream of physically and mentally and still be in that age, but in the mindset or the body of the 20, 30 year younger person. It's not possible. So we have to forge a new path for us to create happiness, satisfaction, a life we love based on what we can do at that point in our life. It doesn't mean being sitting back and just saying, oh, I'm so, I can't do it. I was, I'm not like 20 years anymore. That's okay. You got other assets. You got smarter. You learned a lot along the way about your body and your mind, and you can implement those strategies if you just think about it the right way. And while we're talking about this, I'm leaving a link for you in the show notes with episode number 64, why mental and physical strength are a powerful team. Let's dive into the three midlife mindset strategies to strength and flexibility. You know, midlife isn't just a time. It's a chance to redefine what strength and flexibility re really mean for us. It's about more than just keeping our bodies in shape. It's about shaping our mindset to tackle the changes and challenges ahead with grit. These aren't just tips there are transformations waiting to happen. And number one is adapt a growth mindset. Adopting a growth mindset means seeing every challenge not as a barrier, but as a stepping stone. It's about looking at every effort, every workout, every small choice as a part of a bigger journey towards becoming your best self. Hey, it's Heike. I want to jump in and tell you about a program I'm offering. If you're ready to take control of your life and feel vibrant again, then the Pursue Your Spark Blueprint is for you. It's an eight-week online group coaching program for women in midlife. On this life-changing journey, you'll start a healthy intermittent fasting routine, lose body fat, improve gut health, and boost your energy. And boy, will you feel stronger after the course. With our course, you won't feel like you need to start over each time life gets in the way. 
are tailored Pilates and strength training exercises combined with a built-in accountability system will make sure that you build lasting and consistent habits. We're not just about physical transformation. We're here to help you build a confident mindset to make guilt-free, smart health choices. Imagine going mountain biking or fitting into last year's clothing without a hitch. That's the energy and vitality the Pursue Your Spark blueprint brings. Ready to prioritize your health? Click the link in the show notes to apply. It's time to invest in yourself because you are worth it. It's the difference between saying, I can't do this, and asking, what can I learn from this? But how does it actually work? Start small, you know me, baby steps. Let's say you're trying a new exercise routine and find a particular move challenging. Um, to my mind, it comes grapevine. Grapevine is challenging for many people. Instead of getting frustrated and giving up, take a beat, break it down. Another baby step. Maybe today you can complete, you can't complete the whole grapevine, cross front, cross back, cross front, and together, but that's okay. Focus on what you can do, even if it's just one crossover. In our example of the grapevine, one leg crosses over and then you're stuck. That's okay. Celebrate that victory. Tomorrow, try to get the other leg to go over. It is about persistence, patience, and recognizing that. Progress sometimes comes in small increments and they are hard to see, but over time they add up to significant changes. So it's not just about reaching a goal, but about learning and growth that happens along the way. Each attempt, each workout, each day you choose to keep going adds to your resilience, making the journey not just about physical fitness, but personal growth. And many people that start Pilates say, have I gotten stronger? Have I got leaner muscles? How, how, how can I measure this? And Pilates is really hard to measure progress. You may work on your Pilates mat work if you don't have the equipment for a long time until you feel that you're stronger, that you are more connected that you sit taller, that you breathe better. And these things are hard to quantify. It's not like picking up a dumbbell saying, yeah, I went from three pounds, now I'm at eight pounds. With weights, it's different, of course, or with a with a stretchy dyna bands, when you use a harder uh, band that's a little more density, but weights are always a good example for that, that you climbed up in your amounts of repetitions you do. But when you can't, quantify it sometimes. It is hard to stay connected and stay committed to it, but don't give up. Shifting your growth mindset means focusing less on proving yourself and more on improving yourself mentally. So think about the mental aspect of what you're learning as you're adopting that growth mindset. It's what can I learn from this? Oh, maybe the grapevine is not ideal for you, but it could be a great challenge. Starting Pilates is be patient, baby steps. It will prove what Joseph Pilates said. And number two is set intentions, not just goals. Go beyond the SMART goals. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals. Add some intention into your fitness journey. This means looking at the deeper why beyond your desire for strength and flexibility, perhaps it's to play with the grandkids without pain or travel the world easily. Or like in a recent coaching call with a client, the initial goal was to lose 25 pounds. And my question was, why? Many, many times when I work with clients in our coaching programs or one-on-one, -on -one, they they, the people have a certain goal in mind. It's always a number. There's a certain number. Nobody ever comes to me and says, Heike, I want to lose weight. It's always, I want to lose 25 pounds. So I said, why do you want to lose 25 pounds? And she said, I want to have the same weight as in college. Okay. Why do you want to have the same weight that you had in college? 
Well, I felt really young and strong. Why do you want to feel young and strong? I want to feel like my old self again. Did you remember our three points? Letting go of who we were. And I said, why do you want to be like this back then? And she said, I don't know. I wasn't quite that happy back then, but I was thin. And so we wrapped it up in that when we're setting goals that are smart or any other goal, maybe not so smart uh, because we don't have a real good plan, we need to keep in mind the why we're doing the things we do. We want to know what the deeper meaning of that is. And in in my example with my client, it was not really about losing those 25 pounds. She wanted to feel stronger and healthier, but the pounds were really not what she was after. And number three is cultivate self-compassion. Be kind to yourself on the days when progress seems slow. Self-compassion boosts motivation and resilience, helping you bounce back, especially after a setback. And that could look like that you forgive yourself for off days. Everyone has days when the energy level is low or motivation seems to have taken a vacation. Instead of beating yourself up, for not hitting your workout as hard as you wanted or missed it all together. Remember that rest and recovery is part of the process. Tell yourself and say it to yourself out loud. It's okay to take a break. I'm listening to my body and my body needs rest right now or a break. Without guilt, without shame, without chastising yourself, It is okay to take days off and then practice mindful. Yeah. Practice mindful self talk. Change the narrative in your head from uh, practical to supportive. Instead of thinking, I'm not good at this. I'm getting better each time I try. This shift in perspective fosters a kinder, more supportive inner dialogue. Talk kindly to yourself. Always remember, and you probably heard that before, would you talk to your friend the way you sometimes talk to yourself? And that makes most women and men stop in their tracks and say, oh, wait a minute. I don't deserve to talk to myself like this. I am better than this. I am, I got more skills than I give myself credit for. So practice mindful self-talk. And beyond all that, set realistic expectations. Understand that progress is not linear. Some days you feel on top of the world and you have a gazillion energies, sometimes not so much. Setting realistic expectations about what you can achieve helps mitigate feelings of failure and foster a sense of accomplishment over time. And when you're thinking about, okay, I have this smart goal, It doesn't go away if you keep at it over time with consistency. You will get there eventually. And you know, sometimes I also found that as we learn more about our feelings, our why, our how we think about the things that we thought we wanted, we change course midway. And that is okay too. Now, with the um, realistic expectation and the... um, I'm not motivated right now. And I want you to visualize a row of water glasses and each glass has different amounts of water. So they're not equally filled with water, but one is full, one is half full, one has a little sip in there, one is sort of in the middle. And uh, I saw that on social media the other day and I thought it was the perfect visual to talk about expectations, motivation, and how it actually fluctuates throughout our lives. We can't be woohoo gung-ho all the time. So when you get to that setting realistic expectation, think about the water glass image. And I also will put a link in the show notes for episode 63, three ways to practice mindfulness every day. 
So you can take a listen to that. And finally, it's time to dive into the five ways to shift your mindset, strength, and flexibility. There are five ways to shift your mindset from the all or nothing mindset to a kinder and more forgiving approach to reach your health, fitness, and wellness goals. And I just recently recorded episode 209, three ways to breaking the all or nothing cycle. And I will leave a link in the show notes for you so you can take a listen. So here they are, the five pivotal practical tips for what the mindset shift might look like in real time. We're all about taking action here on the Pursue Your Spark podcast or at Pursue Your Spark in general. Number one is start with realistic goals. Begin by setting achievable goals that provide a clear direction. Start small like incorporating a 15-minute daily walk or jog, a beginner's Pilates class twice a week. Each small victory builds momentum and confidence fueling your journey forward. So it's just the goal. See what you can do. Practice that goal also over time. Just taking that walk once a day or maybe two times out of the week doesn't go with what your plan was. If you have to backtrack, which brings us to number two, You can do that too. Number two is listen to your body. Understanding and respecting your body's signals is paramount. Adopt the flexible approach to fitness that accommodates how you feel any given day. Scroll back if you missed that part where I talk about that. Some days you might power through a full workout with a while a gentle stretch on other days might be just what you can handle. This adaptability prevents injuries and keeps you engaged in the long term. Did you know, yeah, did you know that Pilates is a mindful movement? Many of us associate Pilates with core work, back pain, uh, alignment, and breathing. But the repetitive movement of Pilates combined with breathing and When you hear me cueing in in my classes, you hear me oftentimes say, inhale for nothing, that means you don't move, and then exhale as you roll up. Inhale as you roll back. We're making the breath last. So it becomes a rhythmic movement coordinated with the breath, and it becomes so mindful, and many people don't associate Pilates with that mindfulness of the movement. You're paying attention to Is my leg turned out? Is my neck or shoulders up? Am I engaging all the muscles I think I engage? So you're doing a mental checklist of the mindfulness, understanding what your body is teaching you. If you're saying, oh, my shoulders are up. Your body is saying, wait a minute. We need to get those shoulders down. And we're being more mindful. So it's not about pumping out the roll-ups, going as fast as humanly possible, but with mindfulness, focus, and concentration. So all of Pilates principles. And number three is integrating exercise into your daily life. Make physical activity as seamless as possible a part of your day. Up for the stairs in, instead of the elevator. Engage in active hobbies like gardening. Big gardener over here. Choose a parking spot further away to incorporate more walking. When exercise becomes a natural part of your routine, it feels less daunting and way more sustainable. I know so many people that have said, Heike, I can't find time. I don't know how to do those 15 minutes you always keep talking about. But you know what? You can sneak them in and do those little exercise bites that I love to uh, also talk about, especially on social media, little exercise bites. They mean walk up the stairs, walk down the stairs. Um, You know, the uh, gardening idea could be simply you raking your leaves a little bit or you picking out the weeds. It doesn't have to be anything monumental, but integrating uh, neat N-E-A-T exercises into your day, which are daily ex- activities that you incorporate, just like breathing and eating. They become second nature that, for instance, after your dinner, you start doing your walk. 
because it feels great and helps you sleep better too. So on to number four, celebrate wins. Do you choose a healthy snack over something else nutritious? Did you stretch for a few minutes even though a full workout wasn't happening? These are wins. It does. It's not about perfectionism and it's not about the all or nothing mindset. Acknowledge them. Celebrate those moments. Build a positive relationship with your health journey because you know life will get in the way. You had planned to eat this healthy snack. Well, there wasn't none. There wasn't one because you didn't have time to go grocery shopping. Well, do the next best thing. You may have found a granola bar from your kids or your husband, or you drink a, a protein shake. It's not about perfectionism, but you say, okay, I did something. I didn't walk around being hungry using that example and feeling so hungry that I, in the end, even though I was trying to be very disciplined, which is a different topic, I just grab whatever the next best thing was. So think about, re, pay attention to what you have, what you can do when life gets in the way. And it always does. And number five is journal for reflection. Writing stuff down is the bomb. Spend a few minutes each day writing down things you're grateful for. Uh, about your body, about your health journey, about your life. This can shift your focus from what you feel you lack in appreciation to what you have and what you're capable of. We forget the small stuff. We always do. We think about that we need to do grandiose things in our minds and we need to accomplish all of this, especially as women. We're sometimes such overachievers and we don't have to be. Because if we love ourselves, if we're focusing on gratitude, if we're focusing on all the five steps that I just mentioned, start with realistic goals, listen to your body, integrate exercise into your daily life. That doesn't mean planned exercise. Celebrate small wins and journal for reflection. It can be an eye-opening experience. And I also We'll leave a link in the show notes of episode 111. It's eight new ways to be grateful during the holidays. Well, it was a holiday post, but it applies to a lot of the things that I want you to think about and reflect on when it comes to gratitude. Gratitude changes everything. If you are grateful for the air you breathe, that you have food on the table, that and if you're, or when you're watching the video, I always have a cup of hot a ginger turmeric tea with me. And to me, there's nothing more fulfilling and satisfying and calming than drink, holding my cup of tea with both hands and drinking that tea and just breathe and let everything just fall away. So that's one of my strategies. And that wraps up our episode today titled Midlife Mindset Shifts to Strength and Flexibility. Remember, it's not just about the physical workouts, the Pilates, the strength training, or the yoga. It's about flexing and strengthening your mindset. When you courageously tackle those mindset hurdles and cultivate growth-driven, positive mindsets, you're not just aiming for flexibility and a strong physique. You're nurturing a life brimming with vitality, resilience, and profound fulfillment. The synergy between mind and body is where the magic really happens. Transform not just your health, but your entire approach to life in its ups and downs, its challenges, and its beautiful opportunities. Remember, we're all in this together. I'm here to guide you every step of the way, every single step of the way. If today's episode sparked something in you, if you're ready to make those midlife life shifts and embrace a life of strength and flexibility, then I've got something special for you. The Pursue Your Spark Blueprint is waiting to kickstart your transformation. Get on the wait list now and be the first one when it, the doors open again. The link will be in the show notes. And if you have to talk to me and want to talk to me in person, 
Now is your time to shine. Secure your 20-minute Spark Breakthrough Call now and let's pinpoint that one action step that will pivot your health journey. Don't wait. The link is also waiting for you in the show notes. This is your moment to take a bold step towards wellness that you deserve. And finally, if you have any questions or thoughts or want to share your journey with me, I am all ears. Reach out to me at heikeatheikeyates.com and make sure to put mindset in the subject line. I can't wait to hear from you and dive into your stories and challenges. With that, my friend, I'm out of here and I'll see you next time on the Pursue Your Spark podcast. Ciao.